the sun's out so we don't have to have the heating on anymore and who can afford uh, their heating these days even uh, with uh, the Ofcom uh, price cap uh, well I'm wondering how much you're going to be able to afford your heating in the future when uh, the British gas boss chief executive Chris O'Shea if he gets his way um, we might not be able to afford it depending on uh, well what time of the day it is what time of year it is and uh, what kind of meter we've got because he has called for every household to be forced to have a smart energy meter he says this will help hit net zero targets he says it should be mandatory to have a smart meter uh, getting devices into 100 percent of homes he says we think that in order to have the proper smart grid that is required to keep costs low in the future everybody should have a smart meter and uh, one of the things we should consider is whether this is a voluntary program or whether it should be mandatory uh, now, let's talk about this with Rupert Darwell. Um, uh, he is the author of Green Tyranny and joins us right now. Good morning to you, Rupert. Afternoon to you, Rupert. Sorry. Good afternoon, afternoon. Julia. Right. First of all, can you just explain, before we go into why they might think this would help towards net zero, what does a smart meter actually do that um, your, your, your current meter, if you haven't got one fitted, uh, does itself? Well, it, it gives you... Um, it gives you a precise readout of the energy you're, you are consuming at that exact moment in time. So instead of seeing a dial flip to turn around slowly, it gives you a kilowatt hour um, instant readout of your energy consumption. So, so um, is the idea that you can see exactly what is, you know, which gadgets you've got on, whether it's the washing machine or the kettle, is actually using a lot of energy, yeah, so you can try and use less energy. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what it says on the tin. But actually, as we know, Julia, it's not really about that. It's that's, about that's the two thing. things, Julia. It's about, first of all, peak charging. So when, as we go to an all, you know, having more and more wind and solar on the grid, when there's not very much wind and the sun's gone down, uh, the cost of energy, supplying energy goes up. And so the energy companies can have peak charging. So you'll you'll be dissuaded from putting on the kettle or turning on the oven or yeah. using the washing machine. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is that it gives um, the grid operator the ability to turn off, <laughs> turn off your appliances where there's not enough electricity. So if you look at the Energy Act that was passed last year, it gives the government the power to make regulations that force appliance manufacturers to install a smart chip yep. in those appliances which communicates with your smart meter so uh, um, a direction can be sent yeah. centrally to can shut I just say, down when i've explained some of this to people because people in my building have gone oh we're going to get a smart meter fit and i said don't do that this is why you shouldn't get one and they all think i'm a conspiracy theorist until they look into it but this is reality and when we talk about like peak charging the point of peak charging is it is that prices can be put up at, as you say at peak times like you know like when you get a, again a, a train ticket you know if you're trying to get into london at, before 9 a.m you're going to be paying three or four times as much as uh, traveling on a sunday morning but but the key point is it's been marketed i see these adverts and i must say i'm, I'm you shouting at the telly when i see them where they've got you know they have athletes and stuff I'm, I'm saying oh this is great because it's cheap energy to use at this time and if you have a smart meter then you can get to take advantage of this cheaper energy by definition if there's cheaper energy for some people there's more expensive for others but the point is that if you're well off you're not going to worry about putting the dryer on or 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 or, or, or putting you know doing cooking in the oven at peak times because you can afford it but people are on lower incomes who are going to really struggle they're going to be put off so what we're saying like you can't use energy in the evening when you come in from work with the kids because you're on low income i mean we're a first world country the idea that that is the solution to our energy problems is quite extraordinary isn't it i mean it's like rationing during wartime yeah, the, the truth is, as everyone should know by now, that net zero and these climate policies are hugely aggressive. The energy constitutes a higher proportion of lower income household budgets yeah. than it does for the wealth. So as you point out, people who are well off or very well off are relatively indifferent to the cost of energy. It's a small part of their overall spending. And they're the ones who push net zero. They love it. They don't mind if other people can't afford to fly. What do they care? Yeah, they, and if you're super wealthy, you go by PJ, don't you? Yeah, PJ. <laughs> I love it. He sells on PJ's private jets. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the key thing. It, it, it does hit. But what I find fascinating is that, you know, you've got this chief executive, Chris O'Shea, 
and British Gas saying this will help us hit our net zero targets. But this is the giveaway, isn't it? Hitting net zero isn't about having cleaner energy, more abundant, cheap energy and saving the planet. The actual p policies of the net zero by 2050 policy is for us to use less energy that there is no way we're going to have enough clean ample affordable energy that, that we can all just prop power everything from solar and wind it's not going to happen we ain't going to have built enough nuclear power stations as backup we're not going to be able to do that so the only way of us hitting those targets randomly chosen completely uh, i would say unethical is if we use less energy and that means you know not driving your car not getting on a plane not being able to heat your home not being able to to use your washer dryer uh, uh you know on, on a weekday evening i mean this is hugely aggressive but this hasn't been sold to the public like this it's all about us 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 saving money us taking advantage of cheaper prices but we wouldn't need to take advantage of cheaper prices if we had plenty of affordable energy well, Mr. O'Shea actually gave the game away because he said yeah. this is about uh, lower energy costs. And then he said people with smart meters, well, they, they're they saving about 3%. 3%? Yeah. If it was 10 or 20%, that'd be something else. But he's talking about 3%. So as you say, this is not about... It's not about cutting household bills and, and, and affordability. It's basically about cutting the amount of uh, energy that households use. You're absolutely right. And so-called energy efficiency is a huge part of the plans for net zero. And actually... Rich no, no, said, don't even use their language. It's not energy efficiency. It's it's yeah, using less energy. Yeah, what you think is we, the reason right. why we have amazing lives now is because we can heat our homes, or indeed you put a fan on, or lucky people have aircon when it gets too hot. Or you, we, we can cool our homes. Uh, we can we can power all these amazing gadgets. We have mobile phones. We can we can we can stream films. Uh, but we can also we can cook really quickly. We have we have all of these goods that are made in the fridges and the freezers and the and the ovens and the microwaves and the kettles that have made our lives so much easier. We're able to buy cheaper goods that are manufactured using losing huge amounts of energy and they make our lives easier and better you know if we're not allowed to use much energy that we know what's going to happen our lives become less good no you're absolutely right and there's this very important concept in, in economics called the Jevons paradox a brilliant 19th century British economist and he pointed out that when if you use energy more efficiently you use more of it so you're absolutely when they talk about energy efficiency they're not talking about actually energy using energy more efficiently and therefore it becomes cheaper and therefore you use more of it they're actually talking about cutting the amount of energy used and principally that is through price that is the way they do it is through price and that's what mr o'shea is talking about is about peak charging yeah. which will which which will put people off boiling a kettle when everyone else is. Absolutely. That's exactly I mean, again, it's so sinister. Rupert, I really appreciate you joining us. Rupert Darwell, Elsa of Green Tyranny.